Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Italian braised beef and potatoes. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to make one of my favorite dishes of all time. And while I do like vegetables and would serve some alongside this, what I love and crave the most is meat and potatoes. And this, my friends, is about as meat and potatoes as it gets. And we will meet the potatoes in a few minutes, but what we'll do first is season up some nice thick slices of beef shank. And we're going with that because it's one of the toughest cuts with the most connective tissue, not to mention includes a nice marrow bone in the middle. And it's these type of cuts that really do braise the best, since as these cook, all that connective tissue breaks down, which is what produces all that amazing, rich, sticky goodness. And what we'll do after seasoning both sides with some salt, freshly ground black pepper, and cayenne is head over to the stove to sear this in a nice heavy bottom Dutch oven or something similar set over high heat in which we've drizzled a few tablespoons of olive oil. And what we'll do is sear that for about three or four minutes per side. And there's lots of these rustic Italian inspired braised dishes where we do not brown the meat first, but getting some nice caramelization on the surface first before we add our braising liquids does help us achieve a little more flavor. And the next person that complains about a dish like this having too much flavor will be the first. So to me, this step is definitely worth the extra couple minutes. Oh, and speaking of connective tissue, sometimes when you sear beef shank like this, those membranes and connective tissue will contract and the meat will kind of curl up like this. And if that happens, all we have to do is take some scissors or a knife and just cut through the edge in a few spots. And by the way, that's not gonna affect the braising but it's a proven scientific fact that flat things sear better than curled up things. And sometimes I'll actually make a few cuts before I sear. But anyway, if yours curl, don't be afraid to give them a snip so they unfurl. And then once we do have those nicely browned, we'll go ahead and remove those to a plate and we'll reduce our heat to medium and toss in our chopped onions and celery along with a nice big pinch of salt. Well, actually I tossed in that same seasoning mix I used for the beef. But anyway, we'll toss in some salt and maybe a little bit of pepper and we will cook that stirring for a few minutes or until those onions go from bright white to sort of translucent. And once our veggies do soften up a little bit and have taken on some nice golden brown color, we can stop and toss in some tomato paste as well as a generous amount of minced garlic followed by some dried rosemary as well as some dried marjoram. Although oregano is gonna work out pretty much exactly the same. And what we'll do is give that a stir and cook that for a couple more minutes to sort of toast that tomato paste. And by the way, yes, you can use fresh herbs in this. Although if you are gonna use fresh rosemary and marjoram and or oregano, you always have to use like three or four times the amount of the dry to get the same effect. Although it's really not the same effect since dried herbs have a different flavor than fresh. But in any event, if we're gonna call this Italian braised beef and potatoes, we are definitely gonna need some kind of herb component in this. And then once we've cooked that for a few minutes, we can go ahead and toss in a little bit of wine and we'll stir that in and cook it for a couple minutes or until the wine just about disappears. And I prefer white because it's a little more mellow, but red wine would also work. So you decide. I mean, you are after all the Gino, of which vino, but I really do think this needs a splash of something. And speaking of splashes, once that wine has pretty much disappeared, we can go ahead and toss in some chicken broth, plus one bay leaf, at which point we'll give this a stir and turn our heat up to high so we can bring this back to a simmer, at which point we can transfer our beef back in. And yes, you can use beef broth if you want, but I generally go with the easier to find, more neutral flavored chicken broth, since we are gonna get a ton of beef flavor from those shanks, which reminds me if times are tough, you could just add some water and this will still be very, very delicious. But either way, one simmering, like I said, will transfer our beef back in, along with, of course, any accumulated juices from the plate. I mean, you can't throw those away. That would be insane. And then before we cover this and pop it in the oven, I'm gonna take a spoon and baste the tops a little bit, which is completely and absolutely unnecessary. But for me, it's part of the ritual, part of the ceremony, part of the meditation, so if you don't want to baste, don't baste. But I'm a baster from way back, so I basted. And that's it, we'll go ahead and turn off the heat and pop on the lid and then transfer this into the center of a 325 degree oven for two hours or until our meat is almost very close to, but not quite fork tender. 
which is probably going to look a little something like this. And if we poke it with a fork, the fork will slide in without a ton of effort, but the meat is not yet super soft and easy to pull off the bone, which is perfect because we still need to add our potatoes and then put this back in the oven to cook some more. And for me, the best choice here are some peeled and quartered Yukon Gold potatoes, which are roughly about two inches in size. And before we add those in, I like to douse them with olive oil, as well as sprinkle in some of our seasoning mix, or at the very least, a nice big pinch of salt. Plus, since we're gonna have it sitting right there, I like to skim some of that super flavorful beef fat off the top and add a couple tablespoons of that in as well. At which point we'll give this a toss until evenly coated. And once that's been accomplished, we can add those potatoes to the top. And if you're wondering if this would come out any differently, if you just toss those potatoes right into the pot and mix them with those cooking liquids, well, to be honest, I'm not sure. But for me, this just seems right. Plus, since we're not using a ton of liquid, part of the potato is going to be sitting above the meat. And I just feel a little bit better if those get baptized before they get braised. Which is a perfect segue to the next step. Since once those have been transferred in, I'm going to go ahead and rinse out the bowl we tossed them in with about a half a cup of water and transfer that in as well. Since I want to make sure we have enough of those amazing braising liquids to serve with the beef and potatoes once it's done. And that's it. We'll go ahead and pop the lid back on and place that back in our 325 degree oven for about another hour or so, or until our meat and potatoes are very soft, tender, and succulent. And no, we're not going by smell or appearance, both of which are amazing. We're going to go ahead and test this with a knife or fork, which should slide in with zero effort. And then in real life, just go ahead and serve this up. All right, I have to take some pictures. So I went ahead and basted the top and moved a few potatoes around and tried to make everything look extra enticing. And then once I was finally finished fussing, I finished off with a little sprinkling of chili flakes, as well as a nice scattering of freshly chopped Italian parsley. And that's it, my Italian braised beef and potatoes was ready to enjoy, which I'm gonna do in a nice big bowl with plenty of those amazing braising liquids spooned over. And I finished up with a little more Italian parsley. And yes, as you can see, we definitely want to serve this alongside some sliced bread, as well as one optional ingredient, some freshly squeezed lemon, which I will get to in a minute. But for now, I'm going to take a fork and a spoon, and I'm going to start with a nice chunk of those potatoes, which, if I'm being honest, is my favorite part. Well, actually, let's call it a tie with the beef. But they really, truly are extraordinary. And to double check that my memory is working properly, I went ahead and took a bite of the beef next and verified, yes, that's equally incredible. Oh, and as fantastic as the beef and potato are, my other favorite part of this is some nice crusty Italian bread used to soak up those juices. I mean, I would have no problem just eating a bowl of that. And while it's definitely optional, since this is a sort of rich and unctuous dish, I think a little squeeze of fresh lemon is a nice touch and helps cut through some of that richness. And sure, we could accomplish the same thing with a little sprinkling of vinegar. And what I love so much about a dish like this is that on one hand, it's so simple and rustic and comforting, yet at the same time, very rich and decadent and complex in flavor. And whenever I eat this, I'm thinking this is exactly what I want to eat. Oh, and I almost forgot about the fourth component tied for the best thing in this with the beef, potatoes, and the bread dipped in the juice. And that would be that little bit of marrow we can dig out from the inside of the bone and eat on a piece of bread, which is never not an incredibly special treat. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling Italian braised beef and potatoes. All right, I'm not saying there's actually a recipe over in Italy exactly like this, but this was inspired by the very rustic, very simple Italian food I grew up with. Plus, it's been my experience that if you call things Italian, you get more views. Oh, and one last thing before we go. If you can't find beef shank for this, it will work beautifully with some beef chuck roast. But no matter what you use, if you love meat and potatoes as much as I love meat and potatoes, I am very certain you are going to love this. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.